Morning. Happening right now in Springfield, the Hampton District Attorney is set to release evidence in the Holly Perrainen murder case from decades ago. Let's listen in. Ferris and members of Holly Perrainen's family to my right. I thank you all for being here. I recently stated in a public update on an unrelated, unresolved homicide case, as District Attorney along with my team, we never forget victims of homicide. And more important, we work on these cases until justice is served. It is our mission to, to deliver justice for these victims and their families. For all of us involved, it is a solemn and deeply meaningful obligation. In this endeavor, we work as many hours as we can devote. We spare no expense. We deploy only the best investigators and resources, and we employ the latest technologies. However, in many instances, we cannot do it alone. We need the public's assistance. We need someone who knows something to stand up with us and do what is right. Accordingly, we are here this morning to ask members of the media and the public at large for assistance in the homicide investigation of Holly Peranian. Holly was 10 years old at the time of her abduction and murder. On August 5th, 1993, Holly had been vacationing with her family, with her father, pardon me, and other family members at a cottage in Sturbridge. She was last seen by her father at about 11.45 a.m., heading toward a residence around Allen and South Shore Roads in Sturbridge to play with puppies she knew were at a home. About one hour later, Holly was reported missing by her father after she did not return. Her father immediately began searching for her, finding only her sneaker on South Shore Road. Police were notified and a massive search began by local and state police, sheriff's departments and law enforcement contingents from the states of Connecticut and Rhode Island. The search stretched on for days and weeks, continuing with no results. Sadly, on October 23, 1993, Holly's remains were found by hunters in a wooded area off Five Bridge Road in the town of Brimfield. The crime scene was photographed and processed by personnel from the Massachusetts State Police, including its crime scene services section and crime laboratory and the office of the chief medical examiner. Items discovered at or near the location of Holly's remains were documented, seized, and have been maintained by the Massachusetts State Police ever since. Throughout the subsequent investigation into Holly's disappearance and death, evidence has been reviewed, identified for forensic analysis, and subjected to various testing procedures. As a part of my office's ongoing efforts to solve outstanding homicide cases, Holly's case has remained in focus and has been continually reviewed to determine if the application of further forensic and scientific examination would be beneficial. Case items documented in 1993 were identified within the past six months for further forensic testing, expanding on previous testing. Regarding one item, a white tank top, the assistance of the public is now being sought. As you can see, this is a white tank top style shirt with a blue, purple, and pink colored Boston motif on the exterior front. The shirt has no tags or size information. We are seeking the public's assistance for any information about this shirt. We are interested in determining who owned the shirt, its origin, or places where it was known to be sold, anything about its manufacture, or any information regarding its association with the area where Holly was found in the Five Bridge Road area of Brimfield. We also recently included Holly's case in a deck of playing cards that was distributed in Massachusetts jails and prisons in partnership with the Massachusetts State Police which aims to encourage tips and information from inmates who may be in the know about what happened to Holly. 
As we continue this search for answers, we are here today to issue a clarion call to the public and together as a community, as a community, to finally bring justice for Holly and her family. Anyone with information that is specifically related to the Boston tank top or any information at all that is related to Holly's murder, we ask that you contact Holly's tip line, 413-426-3507. You can also use text to tip by texting the word crimes, numerically 274637, and type the word solve into the body of the message followed by your tip. Just a couple weeks ago, on January 19th, Holly would have celebrated her 40th birthday. For nearly 30 years, the Peranian family has been coping with this unimaginable tragedy. Throughout that time, law enforcement has never stopped working to bring justice for Holly and her family. Today, we continue to urge members of the public who have any information to please contact us. To Holly's family here with us today and watching at home, we stand with you in your grief, we share in your loss, and we are relentless in bringing those responsible to justice. Again, if you have any information on the abduction and murder of Holly Peranian, or about the tank top shirt shown, please call the Hamden District Attorney's tip line at 413-426-3507. I thank you. I'm happy to take any questions. Can you tell us a little bit why uh, the tank top itself, you know, you're bringing it forward now. Um, is it something that you've had for a, a long period of time, 30 years? And you know, what is the sort of prompting you to bring it forward at this point in time and not you know, before now? It's been in the possession of investigators since the, the discovery of Holly's body. Uh, it's always been a matter of interest and, and recently has come more into focus, uh, given some forensic testing. Uh, it's important for us now, putting the pieces of the puzzle together at this juncture, given forensic testing and the investigation in its totality 30 years on, that we find out more about that shirt. So when you say forensic testing, do you mean, you mean sort of DNA? Uh, you've been able to identify some DNA uh, on it? I'll keep it at forensic testing. So is the shirt found in Brimfield near where her body was found? It was in that vicinity, yes. In the vicinity, but was it found near her body? It was in the vicinity. What about the size later, of the shirt? What makes you think that somebody, people come and go, we're talking 30 years later, what makes you think somebody will recognize that shirt? Well, someone owned it, right? Someone wore it. Someone brought it to that area. Um, presumably people saw someone who, who might have owned it. It's distinctive in the sense that it's uh, got that Boston motif. Um, we're hopeful that someone is going to recognize it and someone can come forward with some information. Can you say anything about the size of the shirt? By what who would it would have been worn by? What size person? I cannot. As I mentioned, there's no tag on it. There's no information about its manufacture or origin. Um, so we, we don't know what size it is. It would only be supposition. So we're hopeful that we can gain that information from today's press conference. Is it at least an adult size? It appears to be the size of what an adult would wear. Whether it's male or female, we don't want to make that guess. Are there still sure. Can we get the shirt back up on the screen? Sure. Are there still persons of interest in this case? Uh, two years ago, uh, uh, a body was exhumed. Uh, there was David Puglia, whose DNA had been linked to that area. Are those things still active? You, are there persons of interest? I'll answer it by saying, of course, there are persons of interest, yes. What about the body that was exhumed? Has that been eliminated? Is that still being pursued? The investigation is still very open. Can you say anything more about other items that you have how many they might be and you know whether or not they might ever be revealed to the public? Um, I mean, there's, there's dozens and dozens of pieces of evidence that have been uh, accumulated over the years, going back to when uh, the crime scene was established. Uh, we continue to review those pieces of evidence and uh, you know the, the potential application of new forensic technology as it continues to get better. And what made you decide to zero in on this particular as I mentioned, we're interested in, in the whereabouts of that shirt, not the whereabouts, but the origins of that shirt and the ownership, and we're asking the public to help us. But you had tested it before, correct? It, th there's been forensic testing uh, on a number of items. Yeah, yes. so was this, this piece of evidence, this T-shirt, was this like in a bag of evidence that was, that was collected back in 1993? Is this 
part of a, a regular review of what you had gathered back in the day, and, and that's why you're, you're asking the public's help with this, because you're trying to figure out if this has anything to do with what happened to Holly. We're, we're interested in finding out more about this T-shirt. Um, this evidence was collected back in 1993. Um, it was stored appropriately, it was preserved, and has always been a part of the investigation. And now, uh, given the status of our investigation, the, the, the phase we're in, we're interested to know more about the shirt.